Hello worms, hello internet, oh my goodness me, <laughs> I was going to do a fun Halloween um, video tonight but <sighs> I've, got so, I've got so many things to talk about, so many things to talk about, I, I was going to do a, um, a disability video but um, one of my main sources of disability news is the BBC and they're kind of getting a little bit problematic now and one of the things they're saying is like oh yeah we've got to uh, talk about both sides of the argument you know they've been they've been um, pushing this forward you know a lot during question time and things like that the problem is there's a lot of people in this country who are still reading the daily mail who are still setting their ways you know older people i'm 51 I'm going to be 51 next week, actually, November the 9th. If you want to send me a birthday present, that'd be great. Um, and I'm in this really weird position because I, I'm too old to be part of the, like, the young, trendy, woke people. And I'm not fitting in with the older people who've had kids and who are cis and hetero and especially living in a small village. So I really resent the fact that everyone in the UK has been lumped together and being called Turf Island. That is, that's bigotry, I'm sorry, but I think I think the definition of bigotry is saying a whole denomination of people are the same and hating them for it. I'll have to look up what the actual word bigotry means, but that's kind of it, really. I mean, if you said all gay people are promiscuous and filthy, that would be bigotry. If you said all trans people are predatory and evil, that's bigotry. If you said all men are rapists, well, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you could say that's bigotry. If you could say all women are tarts and just want to take everybody's money, that's bigotry, isn't it? If you want to say that all black people are criminals, that's bigotry. If you want to say that all the Asian people are, you know, dirty because they don't wipe their asses properly, that's bigotry. So... Why is it you think it's okay to say that everyone in the UK is is transphobic? Because we're not. There's loads of people here. Or we, we, this is one media outlet, okay? We're not going to judge you. We're not going to judge the US on Fox News. Okay, right, oh, fair enough. A lot of people do. But that that's, that's not fair, all right? One American news, or whatever it's called, if that was all anyone ever saw, they'd say America is bigoted and disgusting. America is bigoted and disgusting. Britain's bigoted and disgusting. There are some people who are bigoted and disgusting. Not everyone is bigoted and disgusting. If I if I talk service, if I talk to you and said everyone in your country is bigoted and disgusting, that would mean you're bigoted and disgusting, and you know you're not bigoted and disgusting unless. You're hiding something? Anyway, I'm trans and uh, it's, it's been hard for me to identify as that. Well, I'm definitely non-binary. I have been set since I was about eight. This is in the 1970s. Such a thing was never talked about then. They didn't even acknowledge that a bisexual was a thing until the 90s. And um, I don't know how, you are, how old you are, serious, but you know, I've lived through a lot of societal changes. I still have very narrow-minded people around me. I mean, I've, I've dressed up as, as um, you know, fancy dress to go to work because they wanted a witch. So I had a skirt on and makeup and that. And on the way home, I, I popped into the local grocers because I needed to pick up some milk and food and stuff like that. And I still had the full makeup on and I said, I had a skirt on. And because they know me, you know, I'm, I'm regular there. And they looked at me and said, oh, you're wearing a makeup and a skirt. And I was thinking, oh, it's actually none of your business. But, and I said to them, well, yeah, I am. But only when I get paid for it. You know, to me, it's drag. You know, if I'm dressing up as a, as a witch and like, I might drop a still into this video. It To me, it's drag. My, I much prefer being in trousers and a shirt. You know, it's... That's the way I am. That's the way I've always been. And that's the way I always will be. So it is very hard when you go up against like societal norms and people pick out how they expect you to be and how different 
you are from what they expect you to be. So don't you come across and say an entire country is turfy because that's complete bollocks. That's really insulting, frankly, to um, service and all you guys in the US. You've got a worse problem than well, we've got. You know, at least we're not like getting guns and shooting people in the streets and killing them and whatever, you know. You know, we've but there has been some homophobic violence, primarily in Birmingham. Um, I don't know whether that's a culture clash thing or not, but it's it's you know that we are coming to terms with certain types of people having to live together in the same spaces and having to accept each other in the same spaces, and it's always been a thing, you know. It's like it's like in South London where. It was posh, white, middle class, and then the Windrush came, generation came in and changed it, and then another load of posh, white, middle class people wanted to come in and then gentrify these places like Brixton and Penge and things, areas that I've actually, you know, kind of come from. And um, and it's like, it puts me in a very difficult position because I, I don't know what side to be on. And if I say, that, oh, yeah, well, I've worked with, um, you know, black people, or I've worked with gay people, or, I, you know, my friends are um, a trans woman or whatever it is, someone's going to come along and say, oh, well, you're just virtue signalling because you're British and you're white and you're married. And, like, you know, you can be married and trans, like, you can be married and bisexual, you can even be married and gay if you're not come out yet, you know. I think it's just so disturbing that we can just plant a label on someone and just say, you're British and you're a turf, you're white and you're evil. It's the same as saying you're black and you're a criminal, you're gay and, you know, you're a paedophile. You're trans and you're going to go into a bathroom and fucking stick around up girls' bits. It's all the same, you know. It's like when, when people say that... So, white South Africans are all racist and evil or you could say that all Australians are beer guzzling ignoramuses or all French people are dirty and let their dogs shit in the street and smoke galois. I'm sorry but you can't just turn around and say a country is a certain thing that's bigoted in fact I mean I can't say that's racist because you know British people come in all different shapes and sizes and colours but it's definitely bigoted, so please stop calling us Turf Island. The BBC doesn't speak for me. Um, and, and you can't really, uh, you know, amalgamate the whole of the BBC in one thing. It's different journalists. Um, and I'm sorry that this particular journalist got green lit on this um, particular editorial. It's not good, because... I've been following on, on um, social media for years, and Twitter and that, and, you know, trans people going along and raping lesbians, it's not a thing. It's it's not a thing. It's much more common for a, a woman to walk through a park and get raped by a man, an actual proper biological man who displays as a man, who was born as a man, who still is a man, and, you know, I... I, I, I I just can't see it. I just can't. See it. I don't feel. I don't feel threatened by trans women. You know. Sometimes you just. Sometimes they. I want to be honest here. There is something about because obviously you know I grew up in the seventies, eighties, and nineties, and there is something uncanny valley about it. But that's just something I've got to get over, and I, I completely understand that. And Cali Valley means something that is what you expect it to be, but isn't like a woman who's not quite a woman or a man who's not quite a man. But it's also, it, you could also say that about um, someone who's got Down syndrome or is in a wheelchair or has had a stroke, is paralysed down one side. They're all human just because they don't look how you expect a, an actual normal human being to look doesn't mean to say that they're any more or less human. And... Um, and I've got subtle things about me because I'm neurodiverse that throws people off sometimes because I'm, I don't want to say this, but I'm ableist passing. You know, there are a lot of people like that. And um, one of the one of the good things that BBC does is actually talk about disability. So I'm so 
disappointed that they can go after another marginalised community and just drag them through the mud. That's exceedingly disappointing. When I when and when I read that article last week, I was like, oh my god. Does that mean that every single article that I'm going to put in from the BBC now is going to be completely dead in the water? It was it was horrible. I I hated reading that. It was it it just made me feel sick. I mean, if it wasn't for the fact that I had to go to work, I would have posted something about it before now. But I just want I just want everyone to be reassured that not all British people are like that, you know. And I know it sounds like not all men, no, but, but, no, just <sighs> get on Twitter, talk to some people from the UK. How many of us are TERFs and how many of us are just nice people? I expect you'll probably get quite a lot of um, nice replies. And yeah, okay, we were in charge of the Crusades. Um, Global warming started with us in Ironbridge and the Industrial Revolution. We did horrible shit to witches, or witches in inverted commas. Um, and, you know, we made gays get themselves chemically castrated even, even when they were defending our country. We've not got a good track record. But then you show me any country in the world who's absolutely perfect. You show me a, pro a, a country that's perfect and I'll tell you you're a liar because a country is only as good as its governments and governments are shite and everybody knows that. And one of the things the BBC is struggling with at the moment is there's a conservative government and if they don't pander the conservatives, they will get their public funding taken away. So they can't win really. They can either, they're either going to be too lefty for the conservatives or too right wing for you know us normal people and they're on a cliff edge and they make some bad editorial decisions but they're a public service we can take we can make them accountable and actually there's a, um, some stories on, on uh, there's some actual um, stories from the BBC on, on this particular YouTube channel when they were very very pro trans actually um, and they were talking about um, MPs in Wales and things like that. I'd like to think that this latest thing is an aberration. Um, I'm a little bit worried that it's not, because one of the things they're talking about now is having a balance. And that kind of means that you've got human rights on one side and not human rights on another. So I'm a little bit worried now that because of the pressure they've been put under they're going to have more voices that are bigoted. But that doesn't mean to say that the whole country is bigoted. The BBC does not re represent us as an entire country. We are the Brit It is the British Broadcasting Corporation. It does not broadcast Britain. It broadcasts people in power who make decisions. That's all, you know. It's no better than Fox. It's no better than any other broadcasting thing out there. And if you don't like it, there are lots of other um, media outlets you can watch and listen to. But the more we tell the BBC that actually that was kind of out of order and disproven and disgusting, then, you know, hopefully they'll listen to us. But they are fighting a losing battle as a corporation um, against... They're fighting a losing battle because of the current Conservative Party. And um, Boris Johnson is well known for being sexist, racist and homophobic and all of this stuff. So, you know, they're, they're, they're doing what they can to survive and I'm not giving them an excuse, but they... It, 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 they're in a kind of bind... I don't I don't know how how to fix that situation but I think the more that people write in because there are there is there is a thing in have your say there's there's also a place where you can write in with your stories um and as a journalist they will pick stories that come to life 
come to light there come to life come to light the more stories we get from the lgbtq plus community the more they're going to have to give our side so what i would urge is that please don't think that everyone in britain are turfs we just need to make our voices heard a little bit better and please look at my youtube videos from um was it last summer or something about that there are there are things that the bbc have done that are very pro trans and i don't want it's you, you cannot tar all, all of us with the same brush you know we're not a backwards country by any means um you know it's not like we're throwing gays off the top of towers and things like that we, you know, we, we the reason that these things make the news, as a lot some somebody said to me before, um, that things only make the news when they're extraordinary. If being transphobic and um, homophobic and things didn't make the news, that would be the time to worry. The time when they do make the news, and they make people think and discuss things, that's a good thing because we need to talk about it but if it's not been mentioned in the news it's mean it means it's it's been denied it's me it means it's being swept under the carpet so yes that was a horrible article yes it was it's been disproved years ago yes that was a rotten bit of journalism very lazy journalism like obviously somebody like who's been on furlough has just been sat at home with like nothing to do is just working from home and come up with this shit instead of like you know going to the office doing work you know actually doing proper research actually talking to people is shameful but it's not the be all and end all it's not no we are all bad no everyone in britain is bad we are not all bad you know we're not we're, everyone's learning you know I'm older, I'm surrounded by older people, I can't go to singing club with my they them badge on, I get called a lady at work, what can I do, I mean, I, you know, if I'd had, if I'd had, if I'd had hormone suppression therapy when I was younger, then I wouldn't be like, so I'm gender dysphoric, but there's nothing I can do about it because I'm it's I'm too old I, I'm in a I'm in a relationship and you know there is nothing I can do about that but what I can do is I can I can help and support people who are in the position that they can transition or um, they can identify as trans or, or but non-binary and show them some love and show that you know not everyone is bigoted and especially like older people like I know there's serious a lot of a lot of your younger view a lot of your viewers are younger and they're going to look at someone like me and say that like I'm a dinosaur and I need written off and that nothing can be further than the truth that there, there are older people who desperately do want to be on the side of, of, of trans people and um you know any any lgbtq people or disabled people anyone who's marginalized we we do want to speak speak up for them but we're surrounded by our, our peers who are an elder um, age group and they have been somewhat, um, I was going to say blindsided, no, they've been so much, uh, somewhat, they've had this, I, can't, I cannot English tonight, um, they've been um, persuaded I guess by, by various traditional media um, and and people in their 50s and 60s or whatnot they're not going to go on to the kinds of media like TikTok and Facebook and things like, uh, not Facebook Facebook's the worst <laughs> um, TikTok and YouTube and you know other other um, social media sites they're generally not going to do that they're going to read the Daily Mail they're going to read the Telegraph they're going to watch the BBC and they're going to post on facebook and you know they all need a little bit of educating and it's very sad that the bbc is is falling into that kind of like 
narrow-minded, traditional, conservative, um, you know, junta who 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 are controlling people, um, and it it it's disturbing. It was really disturbing for me to read that. It was, um, you know, they've done so much good for for so many other minorities, and to read that, it's just it's just horrible it's just horrible and it's nowhere near it's not representative of britain as a whole you know um you see like land of hope and glory you see you know we you see our statues you see our royalty you know you see william you see william, you see uh winston churchill you see it and that's you know that's that's history and and we recognize history but we're not going to revere it. We're not going to get down on our hands and knees and and grovel to it. We don't. We don't have the pl prayer. You know the the pledge of allegiance at, at school every morning. We don't. You know pray pray to the flag every morning. So for a, a, Americans to say that we are a disgusting country. It's it's it's, it's upsetting. Really, it's insulting. You know we're doing our best, right? We might be a little island. But we're no, we're not as isolated and backwards as as you guys seem to think we are. We don't have mixer tabs. I think that's probably, probably. The worst way we're behind you guys in in the US. We don't have mixer tabs, and we don't have as much international cuisine. But as far as other things, we're just as bigoted as you are, as a country. Maybe more, maybe less. But. Talk to us before you decide that we're bigoted. Because we're very varied, you know. We're just as varied as any other free country. When I say free country, that's, I don't know, maybe I'm just stretching it a bit. But, like I say, I grew up in the 70s, 80s, 90s and 2000s. And now, where are we now? 2021. And I don't hanker after the old days. Some of it was horrible. I remember walking around the streets in the, 80s, the 70s and 80s with National Front logos sprayed on the walls and horrible racism, like, actually happening. I remember being bullied for being different. I remember when the disabled were just treated like second-class citizens and insulted and, like, and and being gay was never even talked about. And if you had a gay next door neighbour, they they wouldn't let you, like walk past their garden even because they thought they were going to come and abduct you or whatever. I grew up like that, and I think that's disgusting. And I don't want us to see going back to that. And I really think that, like I say, this particular article. I hope it's an aberration. I hope it's not a taste of things to come. We shall just see. But you need to, not lump us all into the same category because that is bigotry all right well thank you all for listening for to this uh very wrinkly and tired old lady wittering on um i hope that you got something from this if you're in the states please talk to more brits because you're getting the wrong impression of us and uh good night and happy halloween <laughs>